Hi, welcome to GRVO TV, G's Reviews, Views and Opinions. I've done it. I have uh, gone from crop sensor to full frame and I've bought myself a Nikon or Nikon D610. Now, um, it was a fairly big step for me to do this because there was no need, as I've said in my previous video, um, it wasn't something I really needed but it's something I felt I should do because of the videos that I do. Um, and to give a, an informed decision on whether or not other people should go full frame, I thought, well, I'll experience it and um, let you know my thoughts. So I've ended up buying the D610 with the 24 to 85 as a kit. And the reason I got this as a kit was because um, purely because I've got a good deal on it. And um, I've, uh, I, I was gonna get body only, um, but, a deal came up and um, I sort of jumped on it really and that, that was the only reason why I, I got the, the kit lens with it and as it turns out I'm quite pleased about it and it's um, a, proving to be quite a nice lens. So anyway as with all my unboxings here it is -da, all done um, I can't bother to go through all that unboxing stuff so here's the camera and uh, I've got it here, let's just get rid of the box. I'm a bit immobile at the moment because I've had an operation, so forgive me if I look a bit awkward. Um, but I've had a lump removed off my back, so I'm a bit sore at the minute. So here we have it against the, uh, just standing next to the D7000, which is my old camera. Um, and the way I sort of work my cameras is I did have the D5100, then got the D7000 and I gave the D5100 to my partner. Um, so I've sold the D5100 and now she's got the D7000 um, and obviously I then still have that as a backup if I need it as well. So um, it works quite well, it means I get to keep the camera. And interesting, these cameras use uh, the same battery, same charger, which is actually quite useful now because now we have two batteries, two chargers, um, and then I'll, I'll probably just get one spare battery that we can have between us um, if necessary. So weight-wise, um, these two with the lenses they have on them, which is the 18-200 to 200, um, VR2 on the D7000 and the 24-85 uh, to 85 on the D610, the cameras here weigh, it, I weighed it about 10 grams different. Um, so virtually nothing in it in this setup. Um, obviously different lenses are gonna give you different weights, but overall there's, there's not a great deal in it. And when you have a look at these cameras, um, front and back, they're very similar. The D610 is sort of a mixture of a D7000 and a D7100 and a D800 as far as I'm aware. I mean, the D800 was a lot bigger and I, I just didn't like that at all really. Um, but I feel very comfortable with the D610 and um, I've carried it around on my side strap and uh, no issues at all. Um, doesn't feel any heavier than what I'm used to. Um, I'm quite happy to carry that around all day. So that's good. Um, and again, uh, the, the layout is pretty much the same. They've moved things like the record button um, and the way the live view system works. I mean, I don't see that there was any problem with the live view as it was on the D7000, but they've changed it to the one on the D800 and um, that's all good. Now, one of the things I didn't like when I tested the D600 um, was this uh, locking mechanism on this wheel here. It doesn't have it on the D7000 and I've never knocked it. Um, it's never been an issue. And I didn't like having it on there to be honest, but in reality, it's no problem at all. It's just something that you, you get used to. Um, they've got a little um, thing there, the same um, to tell you where you are. Uh, the, the, the wheel underneath is pretty much the same other than you've got this quiet continuous mode as well as all the other modes now. Um, it shoots the same speed, so I have it set continuous low to four frames, continuous high to six frames, and you've got quiet, quiet continuous, um, which I very rarely use. There's an extra button on the back, um, down the left hand side we've got five, and they've also moved the ISO, um, but the way I have it set up is that when I'm in aperture priority, I have the front wheel um, changes the aperture and I set it to the rear wheel changes the ISO and then when I'm on shutter priority it swaps and then in manual 
um, one shutter, one's aperture, um, and it's easier to get to the ISO button because you can do it without looking now because it's the very bottom one. So you just press that and turn. So whereas before on the D7000, it was the second button up. It was more difficult to change on the fly, easier on this one. So that's a good thing. Um, so in use, it's nice and quick. Um, shooting uh, raw and uh, fine JPEGs, uh, like raw to one card, fine JPEGs to the second card. It shoots pretty quick. It will do a burst of about between sort of 12 and 14 shots before it buffers. Um, in fine JPEGs, it, it's sort of it's no problem at all. It will just keep shooting. So if you or if you really want to spray and pray, then go to fine JPEGs and you'll be fine. Um, but I don't tend to do that. Um, maybe short bursts of two or three in little blocks um, is the most I ever do. Uh, but the I will just quickly demonstrate the. Uh, so this is. Let's just change it to continuous high on both of them. So this is uh, six frames per second. And that's what the D7000 used to sound like. It actually seems a bit quieter. It's because it's got a bigger mirror. It's a, it's a different sound and it's a more of a, a, a solid sound that you get from this. And then I'll just do it in the quiet continuous mode because, I don't know, I don't really get it. But yeah, let's just see what that sounds like. Is that quieter? I don't think it's any quieter, I think it, it's just makes the sound go on longer, doesn't it? It's more like a ch chunk to ch chunk, but yeah, I don't I don't really get that. Um, it's not a mode I don't suppose I'm ever going to use quite continuous, but there you go. Um, the quiet mode is good because you click, release, hide the camera, release, and you know, that works quite well. So um, yeah, that's all good. Um, now, just a quick point over the D610 and the D600. I paid about the same price for this as the D600. And um, you know, I know there have been issues and reported issues with oil spots and that on the D600. And um, it shoots a little bit slower. I've got a different shutter mechanism in it. And uh, the white balance is supposed to be improved on this one. So unless you can pick a D600 up at a real bargain price, then I can't see the point because you, you will be able to pick up like I have done a D610 for a good price. Um, I paid about £100 more for this than the, an equivalent D600. Um, and I just think, well, why why would you take the risk on a D600? If there's issues at the beginning of its shutter life, can you imagine when it's a couple of years old and you've put, you know, 20,000 shots on it? Um, you know, I don't... I say, if you can get it for a real bargain, it's a good way into um, full frame. But I think it's going to really die, the D600. Um, and its residual value is going to drop a lot quicker than the D610. That's just my opinion. So there you are. Um, so look around and see if you can find a, a you know a decent bargain price D610, and I think you'll be rewarded on the back end. Uh, Lens-wise, um, the 24 to 85 is a nice lens. It's a 3.5 to 4.5 as opposed to the usual sort of 3.5 to 5.6, which is good. And um, autofocus is um, okay. It's not snappy and quick by any stretch of imaginations, but it's only a kit lens, and it's absolutely fine. And being a 3.5 to 4.5, um, no issues with low light particularly. Um, I've still got my 51.8 if I want to go low light. And I've got the 70 to 200 2.8 Sigma um, that goes on here as well. Obviously, it's a full frame lens and that works really well on this actually. Very well on this. Um, very quick auto focusing. So I'm loving that. Um, I also have, which I will do a review on, which I bought in case I was going to buy body only, is the, um, the 28... Uh, um, 100 and that's a 35 to 5.6 non-VR old film camera lens cheap as chips cost me 35 quid um, I have done a couple of test shots with that and uh, nice and sharp but not very contrasty compared to this lens it's almost like you know when you shoot a raw picture and it looks bland and you have to do a bit of work on it to, to bring it out um, that is a very bland, flat-looking picture you get. It's just not as contrasty as the, the new lenses. 
Um, and that's, I suppose, the difference between the old film lenses, especially that as an old kit lens um, compared to these new ones. Um, but it does work. <clears throat> you can, um, you know, once you put your image through Lightroom, you can up the contrast no problem at all. It's a usable file. Um, and I would have been perfectly happy to use that if I hadn't had this. Um, but so I'll, I will do a separate review on that and a few more pictures um, as well. I haven't had a chance to use this very much. Um, but the first thing I will say about the image quality that I've been getting so far is it's um, everything I expected it to be. I think the D7000 is pretty much in a league of its own when it comes to resolution and the, the file sizes and you know it's just a spectacular camera and I still believe that. Um, the D7100 I've not used but um, I gather that's um, even better and probably closer to the D610. But where this does shine was the low light i mean i've i'll put up a, an image now um which is just taken outside my local garage there's just one light on shining a bit of light and i i didn't need to go to 4000 iso but i did i stuck it on 4000 iso um took the picture and then i'll show you a crop of just the sign which is about 175 percent crop so we're talking really going in um in a long way in the picture and you know at 4000 ISO I just think it's stunning that the lack of um, issues that you get and um, that's just a fine JPEG out of the camera um, with no editing done on it at all really so um, yeah the pictures I'm getting obviously at the moment I'm well pleased with the low light performance seems really good I'm going to have no issues pushing this to 6400 ISO um, whereas on the D7000 my limit was 2000 ISO really, 1600 to get nice clean images, 2000 usable, convert to black and white. Um, whereas on this, um, 6400 is going to be um, still absolutely fine. So I'm loving that. Um, so really this is just the initial, uh, I've only had it for a couple of days. I haven't done a lot of shooting because the weather has been awful and I've had an operation. So I haven't been able to use it very much. Um, obviously you've got the same twin card slots as the D7000, you've now got a mic in put and a headphone jack which is nice if you're into that I use obviously separate sound so it's not an issue for me anyway but um, those are obviously features you have. You can get a Wi-Fi dongle for it if you want, I might pick one of them up, they're about 60 quid. Um, and other than that, that's it really. Um, what else to say? No, oh, I'm loving it at the minute. Um, full frame versus crop. Yeah, let's talk about that. Um, so I am losing a bit, and you have got the crop function um, in the, the distance. But I like the fact that my 50 mil is now a 50 mil, and my 7200 is a 7200. I am losing a bit um, because of the cropping, but I can always flick it into crop mode and get the same um, style as the D7000 would give me. But I'm only getting a 10 megapixel image, which is, to be honest, you know, if I shoot in RAW, um, that, there's plenty of information in a 10 megapixel image anyway. And because the 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 pixels are bigger and carry more light, you're getting a better image anyway. So a 10 megapixel image is probably equivalent to the 16 megapixel image I was getting out of my D7000 when you when you look at the pictures together. So I've got the best of both worlds by having full frame in that I can crop in if I need to um, when I'm shooting with my 70 to 200. Um, and I did think that that would be an issue for me, but as it turns out, it's not at all. Um, as for should you um, move from a D7000 or a D7100 to a, a D610 and go full frame, um, I'm sorry to say, absolutely you should. Um, you really should if a you can afford it um, and b you've got the lenses i had a 50 mil 1.8 a 70 to 200 2 a sigma they're both full frame lenses and i had an 18 to 70 which i sold the d5100 so obviously you can sell your lenses and you don't have to spend a lot of money but it, it you know if you haven't got any other if you haven't got any full frame lenses, yeah, you're really going to spend a lot of money. So if you've got something like a D7000 with an 18 to 200, well, it's not a problem really. You just sell that and get the 28 to 300, I think is the equivalent, if that's what you want, a single lens package. Um, but 
you know, lenses is a bit of an issue, but if you've bought good glass like me and you, you've got a 70 to 200 2 8 or perhaps an 85 1 8 or a 51 4 or something, then yeah, mate, you can quite easily make the jump. Um, there's still quite a bit of value in the D7000 um, if you have to sell that and put the money towards the D610. But um, so ultimately, yes, I would at some point make the jump. And I definitely think it's all, although I think it's a great idea and I'm glad I've done it. There's still no real problems with using the D7000, and I think even the D7100 is better in low light than the D7000. Um, they're just such good cameras that it doesn't make it necessary, but you will notice the difference, um, and it's definitely a jump that I would A recommend, and I'm glad that I have done. Um, so uh, there you go, really. It's, it's, in, it's really down to money. If you can afford it, then to me, there's no downside. Well, now I've done it, there really is no downside. Um, you know, because of the crop mode that you get, you, you can go back to the same. I mean, I could put, you know, if you didn't want to splash out on new lenses, I could put the 18 to 200 on here and use it in full frame or crop mode. Um, it'll automatically crop or I can switch it. So, you know, you don't have to go out and buy a load of lenses, get the full frame camera. And if you get it with a kit lens, you've already got a full frame. Buy a 51.8, you've got a fantastic lens there on a fantastic camera, and that's that will give you fantastic images. So, um, and you know, if you have to buy something like this, even a, a 28 to 100, that's a great little lens that will go on there, cheap as chips. So, um, there you go. Sorry for rambling a little bit. So, I'll, I'll put a couple of pictures up um, at the end of this as well that I've taken this. So, I haven't had many. Um, but um, I'll put a couple up just to show you and I will do a further review once I've taken this out and given it a bit more of a, uh, a thrashing. So um, anyway, this is uh, GRVO TV, G's Reviews, Views and Opinions. I'll see you soon. Bye.